after finally being able to visit friends and family after a prolonged lockdown. 91 excited passengers boarded flight 8303 for a domestic flight within Pakistan. What started as excitement quickly led to panic as this flight approached Karachi. A fatigued and out of practice crew brought this Airbus A320 into the airport fast, high and with key landing configurations missing. You're not going to want to miss this one, so stay tuned. On the 22nd of May 2020, this Airbus A320-200, operated by Pakistan International Airlines or PIA, was set for a regular commercial passenger flight from Lahore to Karachi, both in Pakistan. This trip was set to take around 1 hour and 50 minutes. The flight's number was 8303 and it was expected to operate with 8 crew members and 91 passengers. Pakistan had recently ended their lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic but was in the process of a phased release. Because of this, all of the passengers on this flight were Pakistani nationals, most likely looking to reconnect with family that they were not able to visit for the previous months. This flight was also operating during the holy month of Ramadan, which meant that many of the passengers and crew were fasting during the day between sunrise and sunset. The flight was due to take off at 0800 UTC, which was 1pm or 1300 local time. Universal coordinated time will be used for the rest of this incident. As their takeoff time approached, many of the passengers and crew arrived at Alama Iqbal International Airport. For the crew, the captain and first officer prepared for this short hop before heading out to the aircraft. The aircraft was a 16-year-old Airbus A320. It had a valid certificate of airworthiness, with its last A check being completed on the 21st of March 2020. It had operated for a total of 47,124 total flight hours. Due to the time that this incident took place, the aircraft had been grounded from the day after its A-check on the 22nd of March 2020 until the 7th of May 2020. This was due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the A-check on the 21st of March until the date of this incident on the 22nd of May, the aircraft had flown 11 times. As the crew arrived at the aircraft, the first officer entered the flight deck to start the initial checks whilst the captain carried out a walk around of the aircraft to check everything was in order and safe for the flight. Once the captain was happy, he joined the first officer in the flight deck. The flight crew on board had a mix of experience. The captain was 58 years old with a total of 17,252 total flying hours. 4,783 of those hours were as a pilot in command on the A320. He was medically fit and current with his qualifications and training. The first officer was 33 years old and had a total of 2,291 flying hours. 1,504 of those hours were on the Airbus A320. He was also medically fit and current with qualifications and training. Although it is not mentioned in the final report, it is likely that the pilots had experienced a less than normal flying routine and training schedules during the lockdown. This meant that the crew were perhaps a little rusty after returning from months of minimal flying. The cabin crew now joined the pilots before the passengers were then boarded onto the aircraft. Shortly after boarding was complete, the captain, who would be the pilot monitoring for this trip, requested engine start. The first officer was the pilot flying for the flight. The aircraft was started and then taxied to the holding point before they were cleared for takeoff. The first officer brought the aircraft onto the runway and during the roll moved the thrust levers forward to the takeoff go around detent to initiate the takeoff. At 0805, flight 8303 took off en route to Karachi. The departure and climb into the cruise at flight level 340 were all completed without any issue and shortly after takeoff at 0824, they were handed to Karachi Area Control, who cleared PIA 8303 
for the Nora Busher 2 Alpha arrival procedure. This was a standard terminal arrival, or STAR. A STAR is basically a published procedure to allow aircraft to fly towards an airport safely and in a known and expected way to be able to join the published approaches. They were further informed to expect the Instrument Landing System, or ILS, approach to runway 25 left. The flight crew then inputs the STAR and expected approach into the flight management system and prepared for their descent which was due to begin in approximately 45 minutes. The weather at Karachi was great for the approach into the airfield. The wind was from 240 degrees at 11 knots, visibility was 7000 meters, there were no significant clouds below 5000 feet with a temperature of 35 degrees celsius or 95 degrees fahrenheit and there was no expected change for at least two hours. Without completing an arrival or approach brief, at 0915 the first officer requested descent. Air traffic control then stated, Pakistan 8303, descend flight level 100, pilot discretion, proceed direct, Makli. Makli was the waypoint at the end of the star. As the airspace was clear, they were allowed to fly direct for a more effective arrival to the airfield. The flight crew then selected to fly direct to Makli. Their route now took them to this waypoint and then continued to a waypoint called Sabin. This formed part of the ILS for runway 25 left. In this approach, a holding pattern was included at Sabin to allow for the aircraft to descend in a left hand pattern to the initial approach height of 3000 feet before then commencing the ILS approach. The flight crew now initiated their descent, selecting flight level 100 on the flight control unit with the A320 descending at a rate of 1000 feet per minute. At 0918, passing through flight level 310, the auto thrust system thrust mode was engaged. The engines reduced to idle and the aircraft increased its rate of descent to 2,400 feet per minute to join the expected descent profile for the track miles remaining to the initial approach fix. Air traffic control then informed the crew to contact approach 125.5, but this call was not acknowledged by the crew. Air traffic control tried another three times to contact flight H303. They then asked another PIA aircraft in the area, PIA flight 8368, to relay the message to flight 8303, but there was also no reply. Karachi Approach then called PIA 8303 on 125.5, which was the frequency they were expected to tune to, but this was also unsuccessful. They then finally tried on guard, and guard is an emergency frequency that all aircraft should monitor, the civilian frequency being 121.5, and it is a reserved or guarded frequency used for emergency communications. After the third attempt on guard, flight 8303 responded with, strength two sir, confirm change over to 126.5. They were then informed to contact approach 125.5. They made successful contact with Karachi approach and then they were cleared to descend to 3000 feet on 1004 hectopascals and cleared for the ILS runway 25 left. At this point, they were descending through 15,400 feet at a speed of 250 knots. As they continued their descent, the time was now 0930. They were 16 nautical miles from runway 25 left and passing waypoint Mackley through 9,360 feet at 240 knots. This was considerably high to join the ILS with the expected 3 degree glide slope. Seeing this on the radar and transponder of the aircraft, Karachi Approach contacted Flight 8303 and asked, Pakistan 8303, confirm track mile comfortable for descent. To which Flight 8303 responded, A firm. The captain, now checking the planned routing, exclaimed, What has happened? Stop, stop, oh no! Take out the hold, take out the hold, take out the hold. The first officer responded, Hold taken out, should we report to this happening? The captain replied, no, this could be due to hold, tell Karachi approach, that were established on the localizer. The aircraft was descending, expecting to hold at Sabin 
so the track miles were sufficient to descend to the expected approach height of 3,000 feet. However, with the hold now removed, the aircraft was approximately 5,000 feet above the expected approach path. The speed brakes were now deployed to increase the drag and rate of descent on the aircraft. Air traffic control were becoming quite concerned with the flight's profile of Flight 8303. Karachi Tower phoned approach and stated, Sir, it's too high. Karachi Approach responded, Yes, it's too high. I'm observing it and will give orbit. With 11.4 nautical miles to run to runway 25 left threshold, at 250 knots, Flight 8303 flew over Waypoint Sabin at 7,830 feet. The target altitude was 3,000 feet. They were excessively high with an excess of 4,830 feet above the desired glide slope. With the speed brakes deployed, they were descending at a rate of 2,900 feet per minute at 248 knots. They now selected the gear down to further increase the drag on the aircraft to allow for a steeper descent. With 10.8 nautical miles to run to the threshold, the gear locked down and the aircraft started to pitch down to 7.4 degrees. At 0931, Karachi Approach called PIA 8303 and said, Sir, orbit is available if you want. PIA 8303 responded, Negative, sir. We are comfortable we can make it, inshallah. In the flight deck, the crew were discussing the unusual profile they were on, with the captain stating, Hold was stuck. This is automatically built in, I forgot. The time was now 0932. Flight 8303 was at 4,817 feet with 7.7 nautical miles to the runway threshold. The speed brakes were still deployed with the gear down. The rate of descent was 4,115 feet per minute with a speed of 248 knots. The crew now reduced the speed to 230 knots. The captain then stated, he will be surprised what we have done. With Karachi Approach not happy with what they were seeing and Flight 8303 not breaking off the approach at their own accord, they called and stated, Pakistan 8303, disregard, turn left heading 180. PIA 8303 replied, Sir, we are comfortable now and we are at 3,500 feet. For 3,000 feet, established ILS 25 left. Flight 8303 was at 3,830 feet with 6.5 nautical miles to runway 25 left. It was at this point that the glide slope was intercepted, with the glide slope being captured and the autopilot attempting to bring the aircraft into a stable approach. The rate of descent was reduced slightly with a new target speed set by the crew of 225 knots. Karachi Approach called again and stated, negative, Turn left heading 180. PIA 8303 responded, Sir, we are established on ILS 25 left. The flight crew now selected slats and flaps to configuration 1. The max speed for this configuration was 230 knots. The pitch of the aircraft was decreasing, with the nose down pitch now reaching 12.6 degrees. Karachi Approach contacted again and stated, Sir, you are five miles from touchdown, still passing 3,500 feet. Flight 8303 responded with, Roger. The pitch continued to decrease until it reached 13.7 degrees. At this point, the autopilot disengaged due to the excessive pitch down beyond 13 degrees. The descent rate now reached 6,800 feet per minute. At the same time as the autopilot disconnected, the overspeed warning sounded. At an altitude of 2,230 feet, the ground proximity warning system started to alert. The descent rate was 7,400 feet per minute, with the speed now at 255 knots. The first officer now pulled back on the stick to cause the nose to increase in pitch to zero degrees. Whilst he was reducing the rate of descent, they received a sink rate caution, followed by a pull up warning. With the overspeed warning still alerting in the flight deck, and with the pressure and danger building, the crew now looked to stabilise the approach. 
as their rate of descent was extremely high and the overspeed warning constant, they selected the landing gear up and the speed brake was retracted. The aircraft's speed was still high at 261 knots. Approach now cleared PIA Flight 8303 for landing at runway 25 left. They now passed 1,400 feet, and with the reduced drag on the aircraft, the rate of descent started to decrease to around 1,600 feet per minute. The aircraft was still at 247 knots, with only 4.3 nautical miles to the threshold of runway 25 left. The speed was starting to reduce, with it finally falling below 230 knots, which stopped the overspeed warning. However, they only had 2.9 nautical miles left until the runway. The crew now selected configuration 2 for the flaps and slats. The max speed for this configuration was 200 knots. As the aircraft was still at 230 knots, the overspeed warning started to alarm again, informing the crew that they were potentially causing damage to the flaps and slats due to the excess speed. They now selected configuration 3, which required a further reduction in speed not in excess of 189 knots. They were at 227 knots, which was 42 knots beyond the max overspeed limit for the flaps. With the pitch stable at a neutral zero degrees, they were descending at a more controllable rate, but now they were only at 1,110 feet with 2.4 nautical miles to the runway. The first officer now stated, should we do the orbit? To which the captain replied, no, no, leave it. The captain now started to apply pitch down inputs with dual inputs being recorded with the first officer also applying small inputs. They now pass 1,000 feet above the ground, which would be the part where they would be required to be stabilized to continue the approach. The stabilized approach criteria set out by Pakistani International Airlines was that the aircraft needs to be on the correct flight path with only small changes in heading and pitch, the speed is not more than their land in reference speed plus 20 knots, and in this case that speed was around 140 knots, so they were at least 70 knots above. The aircraft is in its correct landing configuration with a rate of descent no greater than 1000 feet per minute, and all briefings and checklists were complete by the time they reach 1000 feet above the ground. If any of these criteria are not met, a go around must be carried out. For the crew of flight 8303, the overspeed warning was still active, as they were still at 217 knots, with 1.5 nautical miles to go. At the same time, the landing gear not down warning was displaying on the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitor, or ECAM, with an illuminated red arrow beside the landing gear lever active. However, as the overspeed warning was still alerting, it had the priority over the other displayed warnings and was already illuminating the master warning light and aura warning. The captain now stated, cancel it, referring to the emergency cancel on the ECAM control panel. This caused the overspeed audio warning to cancel. The captain now became the pilot's flying as he pressed the priority button on his side stick to take control although it was not verbalized in the flight deck. Continuing on the ILS, now 500 feet above the ground at 220 knots with just 1.2 nautical miles to run, the ground proximity warning system started to alert again with a series of cautions and warnings. As they continued speeding down the glide slope, they passed over the runway threshold at 24 feet with a speed of 205 knots. The captain reduced both thrust levers to idle. The ground proximity warning system now cut out as the aircraft was below 30 feet on the radar altitude. At 0934, only 7 feet above the ground, still at 200 knots, the aircraft was floating down the runway. The captain now selected full reverse thrust on both engines. The thrust remained at idle with the reversers not deploying as the aircraft was not on the ground. The aircraft knew this as the weight on wheel switches were not activated. They continued to float down the runway for a further 4,000 feet until 
at 4,500 feet from the runway threshold, the aircraft made contact with the ground. Maximum brake input was put in by both pilots, with the aircraft scraping along the runway, the engines receiving the majority of the impact. The sound of scraping filled the cabin and flight deck, with air traffic control and observers on the ground watching in disbelief as sparks were pouring from the underside of the aircraft as it attempted to land with the gear up. Both pilots were attempting to control the aircraft, but in different directions. The captain was inputting full nose down, whereas the first officer applied two-thirds full back on the side stick. The resulting input was mainly nose down, as the A320 equalizes dual input to an average between both inputs. The aircraft engines were intermittently making contact with the ground, with the right engine remaining in contact for significantly longer. The increased friction with the ground and reduced thrust from the engines caused the speed to reduce to 178 knots. With the thrust levers still in the reverse position, the loud scraping sound and vibrations caused by contact with the ground, engine number two fire warning now triggered. After 18 seconds on the ground, the first officer stated, take off sir, take off. The captain then moved the thrust levers from max reverse into the takeoff go around detent. With the speed still at 160 knots, the left engine roared into life with the right engine stalled. The aircraft started to climb away from the runway. Engine number one was vibrating ferociously, with engine number two now attempting to restart automatically. The crew now received further ground proximity warning system cautions of too low gear. They now started to reduce the flaps and slats and at 140 feet above the ground, they moved the gear lever into the down position before then moving it back into the up position. This was done very quickly with the gear remaining within the aircraft. PIA 8303 then called Karachi Approach, informing them that they were going around. Karachi Tower, after seeing the event unfold, declared a full-scale emergency at the airport. Engine number two was able to restart with the thrust, but also the vibration starting to increase. Flight 8303 was continuing to climb, now reaching 442 feet at 182 knots with both engines running. They then reduced the flaps and slats to zero to clean the aircraft up. At the same time, the oil quantity for engine number one was rapidly decreasing from 16 quarts to four quarts, with engine number two following suit, dropping from 15 quarts to five. The speed was creeping back up to 200 knots, and the crew now reduced the thrust to max continuous, before then pushing it back to take off go around thrust three seconds later. It was starting to look like the aircraft systems had survived the no gear landing. The aircraft was continuing to climb, now reaching 790 feet with the speed at 223 knots. The crew now again reduced the thrust from takeoff go around to the climb detent. Five seconds after reducing the thrust and at 0935, engine number one oil low pressure warning was activated. The crew canceled the warning and continued to fly ahead on runway track, now reaching 1,270 feet at 243 knots. The crew decided to select configuration one, but both engines were starting to struggle, with both starting to slowly reduce thrust. They now received a further warning for engine number two, oil low pressure. The flight crew for flight 8303 now requested heading and to be vectored for the ILS for runway 25 left for a second attempt. Karachi Approach then informed Flight 8303 to turn left heading 110 and climb 3,000 feet. In the climb to 3,000 feet, at 2,470 feet they started to turn left. Engine number one now started to significantly reduce before shutting down completely. The first officer now stated, thrust lever number two, idle. Move number two to idle. The captain then reduced the thrust lever for engine number two to idle, but the engine number one thrust lever was kept at maximum climb. With the shutdown of engine number one, 
The number one generator stopped providing AC power to the aircraft, the load now being sustained by the number two engine and generator. With the remaining speed, they managed to climb the aircraft to 3,100 feet, but the speed was now starting to reduce. Engine number one had completely shut down, and engine number two was running at idle. The speed was now falling past 199 knots. Engine number two was struggling, and at a low thrust setting, electrical power supplied by the generator stopped. This caused many of the systems to fail. The most obvious one for the crew was the loss of screens for the first officer. As a result of the loss of both generators, the emergency systems were at first powered by the batteries, but after detecting the loss of power, the Ram Air Turbine, or RAT, was automatically deployed. The RAT is a small turbine that rotates in the airflow, creating electrical power for the emergency systems. Meanwhile, at the airfield, Karachi Tower was in contact with approach, attempting to clarify if the aircraft had landed with the gear down or not. The aircraft was now starting to descend with minimal thrust being supplied by the right engine. Both pilots started to try and control the aircraft with the alert dual, dual input, input dual being input. announced to warn the crew. They then received a stall warning. They managed to lower the nose to increase the speed to 222 knots, but the altitude was now 1,900 feet. The captain asked the first officer about the location of the runway and he informed him that it was behind and to the left of the aircraft. Karachi Approach now contacted Flight 8303, stating, Pakistan 8303, you are dropping altitude 2000. The first officer requested 2000 foot clearance, which was cleared by Karachi Approach. The crew now took a breath and looked at their indications and status of the aircraft. They discovered that engine number two was still running. The captain now moved the thrust lever for engine number two forward, with engine number two spooling up and starting to increase thrust. Karachi Approach contacted again, stating that they were showing 1,800 feet and descending. The first officer responded with, copied, we are maintaining, trying to maintain. The first officer now informed the captain that the minimum speed for the rat was 140 knots and asked him to maintain 140 knots to ensure they retained power. The first officer now started to run through the emergency checklist to get the engine generator back on. The captain now stated, you had selected engine number two to idle, whereas engine number one was gone. To which the first officer replied, yes. Even with the power lever forward, engine number two was not effectively producing thrust and was operating around 65% its normal speed. At 0938, the flight's crew were met with several loud bangs, with the aircraft vibrating and swaying with each noise. Engine number two was starting to stall. The captain questioned what the noises were before the first officer informed him to reduce the speed. The engine number two indications were fluctuating. It was attempting to hold the thrust, but would reduce before surging forward again. In the cabin, panic had fully set in. From what appeared to be a normal approach four minutes ago, they had experienced the scraping and sparks of the landing without the gear, this go around, and the vibration that followed. The stalling engine was not a comforting sound, but the distance they had climbed from the ground was at the very least slightly reassuring. In the flight deck, the captain now asked for flaps one. The first officer selected flaps one, and after selection, a single master caution chime was triggered. The extension of the flaps increased the amount of lift, but also drag on the aircraft. Engine number two, which was providing all the thrust to the aircraft, now started to reduce. The struggling A320 now fell into silence, as both engines had reduced below a thrust level able to maintain their height, before then stopping completely. This silence was broken when the flight crew received a stall call out, followed by a master warning. The first officer asked the captain to increase the speed. The captain lowered the nose of the aircraft slightly, and with the reduction in pitch, the stall warner ended, and the speed started to increase. The first officer asked the captain to continue to increase the speed, with the captain replying, how would I increase speed? Looking for other options, the first officer asked, do we have Faisal base here? 
This was a military airbase in close vicinity to Karachi. Before the crew could explore this option any further, Karachi approach called and stated, appears to be turning left. The first officer replied, we will be proceeding direct sir, we have lost engines. The stricken aircraft now at 1,500 feet with a speed of 177 knots. Under the immense stress of the situation, both the pilots now started to attempt to control the aircraft with the call out dual, dual input, input cutting through input. the flight deck. Karachi Approach contacted Flight 8303 again and asked, Confirm you are carrying out a belly landing. The first officer replied, Negative, sir. With the events of the landing still fully in the minds of the pilots, the captain, who was completely focused on flying the aircraft, asked if the landing gear is extended. The first officer double-checked inside and confirmed that the landing gear was not extended. Still attempting to glide the aircraft to safety, but losing height rapidly, the crew then extended the landing gear. The captain told the first officer, cabin crew to be seated. The first officer relayed this message to the cabin, cabin crew to your station for landing. For the passengers, they had not heard from the flight deck in a while. The information that a landing was imminent must have brought some relief. The captain had managed to maintain the speed, but the aircraft was now 700 feet from the ground, still in the left turn. The crew had managed to bring the aircraft downwind of the runway and was now attempting to turn left to line up with the runway. The left turn only reduced the amount of lift produced by the aircraft, but with the surrounding area built up with buildings, the captain had no choice but to attempt to return to the airfield. Realising the inevitable situation they were in, the captain now called Mayday 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 to the first officer. The first officer relayed this message to air traffic control and at the same time the stall call out started again with the cricket. Karachi Approach informed the crew of flight 8303 that both runways were available for landing. The crew had turned through north and were looking to line up with the runway on a track of 250 degrees. They were now at 285 degrees but the ground was approaching rapidly. The captain, attempting to extend the glide as much as possible, stated, don't take flaps, don't take flaps. With no options left, and with only 400 feet between flight 8303 and the ground, the captain raised the nose in an attempt to remain airborne, but this caused the speed to drop to 142 knots. With nothing more they could do to return safely, the captain at the last moment stops the turn at a street between two rows of buildings and at 0940 PIA flight 8303 impacted the ground. In the crash, 97 out of the 99 people on board lost their lives, with two people surviving with injuries. On the ground, one person was killed with three others injured. This was an extraordinary event, as the investigation team of the Aircraft Accident Investigation of Pakistan arrived on scene to investigate, the flight's data recorder and cockpit voice recorder became vital parts of the puzzle. The first major question was if there was a fault with any systems on the aircraft, especially with the landing gear. It was discovered that the systems were working as expected. As we saw from the incident, the crew were too high and fast and used the gear as a means of slowing and descending the aircraft before then forgetting to put them back down. The reason the crew were not warned that the gear was up for landing was because their speed remained above the threshold required to trigger the oral too low gear warning. This required them to be at 190 knots below 500 feet above the ground, which they didn't get below before touching down. As we discussed earlier, the master warning light and ECAM message was illuminated for the gear not down, but it was superseded by the overspeed warning. After checking the cockpit voice recorder, crew resource management, or lack thereof, was found to be a contributing factor to this incident. There were numerous deviations from standard operating procedures, required briefings were not conducted, and several alerts and warnings were either ignored, not verbalized, or cancelled. They did not carry out an approach briefing for their approach into Karachi, or check the flight management system that their flight plan and path was as expected. They didn't monitor or verbalize their descent, and when selecting the gear, this was not cross-checked or verbalized. 
The same was true of all the warnings and cautions they received. When the captain took control, this was not confirmed with the first officer either. Along with the lack of call-outs was the non-adherence to the sterile cockpit rule. This is where, during critical phases of flight, the conversations in the cockpit remain strictly professional and relating to the task at hand. This was observed many times, with one example being when the selected altitude became 5,000 feet. It was observed that no call-out or check was performed by either of the crew. They were discussing various topics not relating to this phase of flight, and this was indicative of a lack of application of procedures and adherence to standard operating procedure. The lack of adherence becomes a little more understandable, albeit not ideal, as the danger and stakes increase, but this trend was set early in the flight before they had any issues, but this most definitely led them towards these issues. The investigation then looked at the effects of fasting on the effectiveness of the crew. Both pilots were fasting during this flight, with the report noting that this probably impaired the crew, but its consequence on flight performance could not be determined. At the time of this incident, the Pakistan Civil Aviation Authority had a rule stating that when a medical assessment is issued, this individual shall not exercise the privileges of his license if he is aware that his capacity to efficiently perform his duties is likely to be impaired by a decrease in his medical fitness or by a period of fasting. In a further air navigation order, it stated, if the holder of a license is aware or has reasonable grounds to believe that his physical, oral or visual condition has deteriorated in any manner, even if only temporarily, as a result of a common minor ailment or by a period of fasting so that it may be below the standard of medical fitness required for the grant of such a license, he shall not act in any capacity for which he is so licensed until he is satisfied that the condition is improved. Pakistan International Airlines would regularly issue internal safety alerts to its crew to remind crews to remain in line with these regulations. Also, while air traffic control were actively attempting to prevent this tragedy, it was noted that more communication could have been had with Flight 8303 regarding the gear not being extended. This would normally be checked by air traffic control on approach, but this was missed with a mitigating factor being reduced staff due to both the COVID restrictions and the reduced number of aircraft arriving at the airport. One additional point that may have played a part in this incident was the scandal that hit the Pakistan aviation industry later in 2020, as it was discovered that at least 150 pilots out of 434 from Pakistan International Airlines held fake pilot's licenses or had cheated in exams. After this information was made public, the investigative team looked further into the licensing of both pilots in this incident and declared that both crew had valid licenses under the Pakistan Civil Aviation Authority. There were several safety recommendations that came from this investigation. For Pakistan International Airlines, they were to take necessary measures for compliance of standard operating procedures by flight crew. They were to review its crew resource management program to promote effective flight deck communication and to take necessary measures for compliance of regulation regarding pre-flight medical check and flying while fasting. For the Pakistan Civil Aviation Authority, they were to take necessary measures for compliance of standard operating procedures by air traffic controllers and flight crew, develop an effective flight data analysis and crew resource management regulatory oversight program, and to review existing regulations pertaining to flight crew flying while fasting. On the 1st of December, 2020, they issued a revised air navigation order which addressed flying while fasting. It states, no crew member shall exercise the privileges of his or her license as a crew member while fasting. I went down a slightly different path for this one. As many of you know, I will usually cover less well-known incidents as I feel there is a great deal to learn from the incidents you haven't heard of. For this one, it has been one I have had my eye on for a while and with the final report only being released recently, it was one I wanted to cover, as the series of events seemed extraordinary. I hope you found the video insightful 
and if you did, please click the like button. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.